It is said that new friends are valuable, but old friends are priceless, and that is because they are the best antiques. Today, a core blog is live here at Molusi College for the Molusi College Student Association set of 1969-1973 Golden 50th Anniversary. This event started with reunion get-together party at Umbe's Hotel in Ijari, Ijebode. And today we are live here at Molusi College where the project initiated by the set will be commissioned. Also tonight there will be a gala night party at the Umbe's Hotel in Ijari. So stay tuned with us as Equalblo brings you the coverage of this event as it unfolds. I am Babawale Solomon reporting for Equals Blog. Molusi College Student Association Mokusa said of 1969-73 commemorated their golden 50th anniversary since graduating from Molusi College with a grand reunion and project commissioning ceremony held on Saturday, November 25th, 2023 at the school premises in Ijebubo, Ogun State. The celebratory day commenced with a significant drive to Molusi College where the set embarked on a mission to commission a project, which was the beautifully renovated staff room adorned with tiles and vibrant paint, a project spearheaded by the Mokosa set of 1969-73. Warmly received by both staff and students, the Mokosa members were greeted with songs and dances of joy as they made their way to the staff room for the official commissioning. What we are doing today is testament to the height of our tourism. This is the school that made us who we are today, that laid that foundation for every one of us that shaped us to become who we are today. And for us to be able to give back to that state, and give a good kudos to all the organizers. Mrs. Bisola Ayeni, in a brief address, emphasized the often overlooked contributions of teachers, and she said, Speaking to the teachers, she said that she hoped that with the renovation of the staff rooms, there won't be transfer of aggression on students and believed they will be happy and comfortable with their new abode.
We shall get to our level and even go beyond. Now, we are at the point of commissioning of our project. What inform the 6973 set picking up on this project is that most times, in most places, we don't always remember the instruments that God uses for our development. And that is why 6973 says, decide to make sure that our teachers are comfortable. What will be the best for us? And the situation of the, and we saw the situation of this place. Um, we just think it fits that they will, this will be the best to make people happy, to put smile in their faces. As teachers, if where you are sitting is not comfortable, there will be transferred aggression to the students you are teaching. But when you are comfortable with the staff room, and then you look around, you will be happy as a teacher, you will be comfortable as a teacher, and you will be proud as a teacher. To the extent that even if you have visitors, confidently you will invite the visitor to come and see your own office. There are some professionals that we always look down on teachers <laughs> as if we are nobody. But this is the time for you to let them know that you are even more than what they think you are. You will be free to raise your head above them. Come and see, come and join me where we stay. And that is why we have decided to refurbish this place. When you are asked to pick professions, you will pick, pick uh, doctors, lawyers, nurses. Hardly will you see anybody picking teachers. But you now realize that you should be proud. When you are asked which career you want to go for, just tell them, teaching. Teaching is a great career. So you are welcome on board. Ladies and gentlemen, our daddies and mommies, this is the time for us to hand over what we have prepared for the teachers or through the principal of the junior school. We now invite him our personal person, he has been going up and down, and he's always proud to be one of the teachers, even if, he, even though he's almost two steps out away. Of the place. Yes, out of the place. so please let me give him a round of applause. Now we are going to invite our daddy to stand in on behalf of this set that we commission. That is impressing of Dr. Wale Kukoyi. I now invite our daddy, venerable doctor. doctor. When I say you clap for me, <laughs> venerable doctor, Fayo, or daddy, the best principal of the
Venerable Dr. Bayo Deni, representing the Global Chairman Dr. Kukoi, officially commissioned the project stating the exploit of the 1969-73 set at a global level and encouraged students to emulate the numerous achievements of the set before taking a comprehensive tour of the staff room with members of the set. I cannot deny belonging to this set, but we want to understand that this is now an assignment meant for the global president. The set is particularly lucky that this tenure, we have a very, very strong representation at the global level. The global president belongs to this set. The global secretary belongs to this set. The VP2 belongs to this set. One of the PRO belongs to this set. And I think one of the S official. Uh, sorry, S official belongs to this set. And I think it was yesterday night. <laughs> yes, I did not. Why were enjoy it? And I mentioned this. Somebody said, Ah, ah, said to me, I said, 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 I I will pray that when you grow up, you will continue to see good things. And you will be a part of good things. So I'm representing the global president because commissioning is usually the assignment. But as he said, like as I said, we cannot remove the principal from this project. Every time my teachers, the aliens, they look, they look, and we are looking at what can we do. So when we presented the project to our class, they said yes, they will take it up. And uh, the member of those set, they are all retired, so, so they were just contributing little, little at a time. Remember, 2023. The principal of the junior secondary school expressed gratitude, acknowledged the said past contributions, including the provision of water and financial support for the repair of the school boards. He further emphasized on his happiness meeting great people like the said and others due to the wonderful things they've achieved. Thank Almighty God for giving me the opportunity of being part of this uh, Mokosa family. Um, on a certain uh, office as the principal of uh, Union School, the first assignment that I did was I proposed the renovation of the uh, a rehabilitation of, I mean, was a renovation of uh, this place and that of the school bus. I discussed it with uh, Dr. Denny and I appealed to him. Some people found this is an impossible part. To the extent that I nearly insulted the global president. And I told him, you have been doing a lot for Molusi College. I'm an old student. What can you say about junior school? The school has been disappointed. I remember when I was in this school, we have buses and all everything. If you want to go out, the students will go out in school this day, but yes, we don't have it now. And I feel to him, what is the master of that? Dr. Benny. Thanks for having me on the For the account of the principal. He promised that he's going to be, uh, do something about that. Uh, that boss. Uh, and I thank God the vehicle is outside now. Put oh, in oh, put <laughs> <laughs> At another time, That's interesting. I saw the situation of this place. I told Dr. Denny, you are my senior. Again. I'm an old student. This place is so good enough. Please, what can we do? He said, um, we are going to do something about it next year. And I asked one question. 
why next year when everything will just go up? Later, he called me, he said, Mr. Mustafa, and that was uh, 2022. He said, Mr. Mustafa, you are going to do something about that place. The other time I saw him and uh, Mr. Oweye, they came. He said, Mr. Mustafa, can you hear me? Can you hear me? So that you are going to celebrate. And they shake me. I really want to appreciate all of you. Now, being a Molusian and see the wonderful things that the Molusians are doing, it's a real privilege. What we have here is not always available in other schools. Nearly every month we commission one project, either in the junior or in the senior, people will be coming, the Molusians, what can we do for our school? What can we do for our school? I really appreciate you all. And I thank you all. And I also thank God for giving me the opportunity of meeting dynamic people like you. But if it's not because of you, I will not be able to talk as a Mauritian. I cannot talk as a Mauritian because I've seen wonderful things that have been done by Mauritian. God will bless you all. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Following the commissioning, the group convened in the hall for a meeting. Venerable Odeni called members to the high table and two Mokosa members shared reminiscences of their school days. Yeah, we entered in 1969. January 1969, Abby. I think all the, uh, the girls, we took our entrance exam in 1968. December 1968. It was late entrance. Then we got into the school in 1968. You know, the school was a uh, boys only. So, just few, few girls. The hostel was there, the guest hostel was there, but the hostel at the extreme end there. The first thing that I was always afraid of was to go to the dining hall and eat. Both morning, afternoon, uh, and evening. Ah! Meet me, 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 yes, me, 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 we will have to go. Well, it was, it was exercise. But as, as a small children, maybe we will not feel it somehow, somehow. But my experience was the first, six, uh, the first four, five weeks of every time, I wouldn't go to the dining hall. Or we call it uh, what? Or do you do it again? I won't go to the dining hall because of the distance. That was how I developed stomach cancer. That was there. <laughs> I'm still not seeing it up till now. Now that was there. And then another another memorable thing. I think you remember Mr. Our English teacher, Mr. Adet Murray. Ah, that that man used to pay. <laughs> Our lenses and uh, lenses and structure was Tom Mori, Abi. Yes. It's Tom Mori. If that man gave you uh, assignment, ten questions, if you miss one, he will, he will uh, give you one stroke of K for that one you are missing, and you will lie down on the table. Nothing at the back except your your cover. Hey, you won't even pray to miss any, any question. That was an experience. And you know that time, it helped most of us to understand English very, very well. It's not the English of nowadays. You are by fire by force. Then Mrs. is you don't know anything yet. One can do it, 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 one if you speak your mind, you say you are speaking for Kapunani. But those things really helped us to mix when we got outside, you know, to be able to speak well, it, it, it was an experience. And if some of the well, no, many teachers of today, if they could, they can be dedicated as our teachers then, I'm sure things will be different with our nowadays uh, students. Well, I wish them the best. Many, many experiences like that. I can remember the first day, this is Balogi. My first one week was in our house. The house was somewhere there. Huh? 
staff, staff, uh, one of the staff quarters. The first one week. The second week, I said I was going to be hosted. So why? Am I punishing you? Am I retreat? I said no. I wanted to go and join my my mates, but it was an experience. And since that time, the woman was called my school mommy. Up to the time we left school, she was like my age, uh, guardian angel. I thank God for that. And uh, it's, it's, it was really an experience. Thank you very much. An institution that molded us to become such productive member of the society. So our, 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 our presence here is testament to that. The camaraderie, the value that was instilled in us that shaped us to be quite an achieved individuals in our own little ways. Oh, you guys. Yeah. Thank you very much for uh, you know, my testimony is that uh, I consider myself a very lucky Mauritian. Because posterity made me to attend Mauritian College. I would have attended St. Finbar's College at Oka. Thank you for that question. What happened was that I passed entrance into St. Finbar's College and Mauritian College at the same time. As a legal boy, I wanted to go to St. Finbar's College, but posterity made me to attend Molusi College. Today, if I sit down and look back and say, ah, I don't want to show when we were to St. Finbar's College. Because how would I have known people like you? Like you, like you, like you, like you, like you. Praise God. So I want to go to Molusi College. And Molusi College has shaped my life. Because I met Kalima people. I went in your play, yo. I was at a play, yo. I went in your land, oh, God. Praise God. Jam your hands together. Praise the Lord. If I have it that is reincarnation, I will still attend bonus college. Praise the Lord. The chairman of the said Al Haji Yomi Hussein during his welcome address was appreciative while reflecting on their lost colleagues and spoke highly of their teachers' efforts to mold them into better individuals with their dedication and commitment. My honorable classmates at Morisi College, whom we started the journey together 55 years ago. The Molusi College uh, community, teacher and students, and our invited uh, speakers and guests. Please permit me to appreciate the organizing committee of this 50 year, year reunion. They have really done an excellent job. Please, a round of applause for them. A round of applause again. For us, at 6973, this is a wonderful set. We call ourselves Ebi Alayo. A round of applause for us again. I greet you all. This set really amazed me in that all this wonderful thing we are doing, those who have resources, both financial and uh, materials, tangible and intangible, everybody has been making it available for us to do all these wonderful things we are doing. Five years ago, we were here and our project was water. I'm sure up to today, the water is still very useful to the community. I'm sure you can bear me witness. I've tried to go around, I've taken pictures, I've taken videos of the condition of the project, but I want to commend the community that uh, the project is being given very good maintenance, and you have really encouraged us to continue to do more. Um, again, our departed uh, classmates, 
not less than 40 of us have departed. So our continue to meet is a thanksgiving to the Almighty God that has spared of our life, that has spared our life. So we thank God for that. Molusi College has really made us very independent individuals. Those of us in those days, we were very good in agriculture, in craft, we have woodwork. In fact, you can call Molusi College then a comprehensive high school. Sciences was very prominent. Then the teachers, they were very honest. They were very dedicated. Not these days when everything is uh, pointing and concentrating on present gain, present gain. Then they were working without looking back. They made themselves available. And when, when it comes to discipline, they would discipline you without, without partiality. They were very honest and they are very sincere. So they have all contributed to make us what we are today. So a round of applause for our teachers. And specifically for our principal then, Mr. Olatunde Balogun. Every opportunity of coming to morning assembly was to come and learn new English word, new vocabulary. I remember it was at this assembly I first heard of the word install. Install. So he was talking about installing antenna of television. He used the word install, and he asked, what is the meaning of install? He now explained. It was at the same assembly, I first of all heard of the two words, fast and run. When you say run, the meaning, we, the understanding we have uh, run is for you to make a quick space. But he told us that when you wear a clothes, and the clothes is dirty, you go and wash it, and that uh, uh, clothes, it loses color. Then the color has done what? The color has run. When the color does not run, it means the color is fast. So the words fast and run, I learned it at the assembly. So such were those days. Such were those days. So they were really very good and very nice and very dedicated. Uh, some of our classmates have come out to tell us a few of their reminiscences. I want to tell you one. I was wearing trousers when I was in Form 4. After school hours, for that matter, Mr. Agbejule saw me. He, he said, I should go and remove that trouser and bring it to him. I look at him, how can I remove my trouser and bring it to you? I disappear into the thing here. For almost one week, I was declared wanted. They were looking for me. They didn't find me until the first day we were starting a school start exam. It was a practical, it was a practical class. Our principal then was at, the, was at the entrance. So when I got there, he asked me, what's your name? I said, Abai Omi Uzen. Before I finished Abai Omi Uzen, the Baba gave me Igbati Oloi. Boza, I was coming to write the exam. Then he allowed me to come in. After that, he told me I should come to his house to come and cut grass. He said I was seen wearing trousers and I was asked to bring that trouser. I refused to bring it. I should go and bring the trouser. The privilege to wear trousers in those days was reserved for who? For financial students, those in for five and the HSE, HSE students. These are the trousers your grandchildren wear to nursery school now. My grandchildren, every morning, they will wear trousers. I'll just look at them. And I remember if that you know you are going for wearing trousers in, in form four. That was the rule. And rules are meant to, to be obeyed. To be obeyed. So that was the situation then. So I, I greet you all. May God continue to bless us. Uh, we are all pensioners, uh, as it has been said. But 
Uh, by the grace of God, we will continue to strive to see what we can do uh, to contribute more to the growth of Modusi College. Dr. Ogunsonya delivered a earth talk on prostate enlargement, cancer and diabetes, engaging the audience with questions and answers. It is my singular honor to be present here to give this um, earth talk on uh, today's occasion. Let me start by congratulating members of the set for what has been doing in your life. I think the God has been faithful, your life, and my life to witness today's occasion. I'm a Mauritian, as has been rightly said before, that's one leg of my action with this set. Another leg is that two members of my senior ones also passed out with you in 1973. Yes. I saw there that um, Clementina Augustonia was repeated twice, number 53 and number 37. I think the second question is uh, Akiola Augustonia. May the Lord rest their soul. Now, to go to the topic of today, which is um, causes and remedies of prostate cancer, and two, causes and remedies of diabetes mellitus. I will take the first one, which is um, prostate cancer. Prostate is a gland in the body. It is shaped like a chestnut. Its weight is like 30 grams. The function of a prostate gland is not that well known, but we know that it contributes to the well-being of the semen that men releases during ejaculation. And the semen is needed for procreation. There's a particular a substance that is found in this uh, prostate secretion and in the semen as well. We call it prostate specific antigen, operation PSA. It is also found in the blood. The normal level is 0 0.4 because in the hospital we use this substance to track how well or how diseased the prostate gland is. There are other parameters that we use, which I will not uh, bore us with. Now, talking about causes of this prostate cancer. Well, uh, it is common in men, as we know, women don't have the prostate gland. The cancer occurs in elderly people. Anybody above the age of 50 can develop prostate cancer. If it occurs in 50, 60, most times it's aggressive. Usually, that leads to demands of such people. But the more elderly patients who are 40 and who are 40, who are 70 and, and above, it was a very docile cause. Even after the diagnosis, it's possible that those 70, 80 will die of something else, like perfectal diseases, but not of prostate cancer because it runs an indolent cause in such elderly people. It is common in the black population. Data from the West shows that lifetime risk of developing cancer of the prostate is 10% in men, and lifetime risk of dying from it is three percent in men. That is men who are above uh, 70 years. Next slide. Like I said, we know little about the cause of prostate cancer, but there are risk factors that we can be familiar with. Age is a factor. I said people are above 50 who come down with prostate cancer. 
the most significant factor is the pace of testes. Because we know that people who are castrated before they attain puberty don't develop um, cancer of the prostate. Then some hormones in the body. Well, these are certain agents body produces that stimulate particular organ to grow abnormally. Principally here is the testosterone. Then family and genetic factors are also important. Causes cancer is hereditary in 9% of the population. There are familiar factors, that is, if you saw it in the grandparents, in your parents' life, then the child, the male child, may also develop process cancer. Then there are sporadic types that we do see in people who are 55 years and, and above. I've spoken about the race. Black people are prone to development of a process cancer. Next slide. Other factors include dietary, dietary fat. Consumption of diet, dietary fat is a predisposing factor. The Japanese, before now, were not having prostate cancer. But when they now westernize their diet, we are now beginning to see that they have the process cancer. People who are, who are given the most or who take the most for stimulation of the muscle who have it. I spoke about men who have been castrated who do not have um, process cancer. Parsectomy in Indians can cause it. External factors like exposure to cigarette smoke, cardio can lead to process cancer. Retinol is a fast soluble vitamin. So it's a shot with breast cancer because it is absorbed by fat. Deficiency of vitamin D could also be a factor. So people spoke about a sexual behavior, promiscuity, but this has not been well accepted. But we just mentioned it. Now, how do you know that uh, one has a prostate cancer? I mean the presentation. The disease may be local to that gland in that area. It could be metastatic. That means that it has spread to other places. So I will try and discuss the presentation of each of these. It is good to have a local disease or local advanced disease because if that happens, the chances of cure is very high. Now, Unexplained weight loss in an elderly patient. Of course, people will tell you that, uh, Mr. Mr. Jones, why are you losing weight? Some as if you are losing weight. The fellow may actually sit by himself too. And that will be the reason why he visits the hospital. And then they will scream for the prostate and that they have prostate cancer. Bone pain. Pain in the bone. Upper, uh, upper limb bones. The particular color, those are the areas or lower back pain. Those are the areas where prostate glands can put the prostate. And by the time the person begins to feel pain in those areas, the damage of the disease is uh, far gone. Easy fatigability, tiredness is weak. I'm not saying that we should do screen too, but not be able to engage in discussion for a long period of time or to climb one or two flights of stairs to be a red flag or a red sign. Lack of energy. Because the prostate gland is in front of the bladder where we store our urine before we discharge it. When it is diseased, it becomes enlarged, it can then obstruct the flow of the urine. So you see that the urine that shows like four feet ahead of you now begins to drop, you know, at your feet. You will, you pass the urine so that the urine has not completely emptied. You want to go back to pass the urine. I mean, during the daytime, 
can pass within like four or five times. The patient of mine told me that he became, in fact, in spite of what worried, they were going to leave us. And the man had to stop at the tabas to pass through him. Not that he stopped, Tansi, this just shows evidence of obstruction. You are there, you is not coming, you are staying, you know. Or before you get to the blue, you have already went to your pundits. Some patients may have blood in the urine. Or we do see some patients, they come to the ETI, emergency bedroom, they do not just be at all. They are in the serious agony. We call that a culinary detention. And we have to do something to relieve this injection and then when we investigate so that they have a positive cancer. Next slide. Now, how do you make our diagnosis? I think this is important. I've gone through what could be the possible presentation. Doctor, as well, I don't sleep again in the night. The urine wakes me up all the time. Or oh, I have pains and all that. The doctor will now examine this patient. You see DRE there. DRE is digital rectal examination. So when you put a finger inside the rectum, inside the anus, you can engage the prostate gland and feel your day because it's the lower part of the body. There are things that we do see there that we can pick that uh, diagnosis. Then, PSA. This is a blood test that we do. For those of us that are doing annual medical, it's really included in what elderly people do. In fact, we recommend that anybody that 55 must go annually for PSA and the digital examination. Because if the PSA is just above four, and there are things in the digital examination, we could diagnose that that person has prostate cancer. More tests can be done to actually compare and be sure of what it is. Then we can tailor management so that that patient will now be cured. So the pattern to suffer an extension of disease and the subsequent untimely death. Other tests that we do is what are listed. Then grading and staging is important. We do all these tests so that we can grade, we can stage. We want to know the biological behavior of that disease because it impacts treatment. We want to know if the system within the prostate gland or has it spread to other places. That is staging. It is necessary for us to do this so that the patient himself will understand what is to expect from things that has happened to him. Next slide. So when we talk about remedy, now treatment, the possible scenarios are localized process cancer with diseases within the gland, local advanced prostate gland, it has spread a little bit beyond the prostate gland. Metastatic means that you can now find it in distant parts of the body, in the bone, in the brain, you know, some places, the confusion of a prostate cancer. Next slide. Now, for localized disease of the prostate gland, we want to catch our patients at this stage. Because we want to be able to cure the patients. See one thing, there are times known to be doctors who actually see these patients. For some of them, we do watch pool waiting. I'll look that part earlier on. A 80 year old man that has this disease, you said in them, it is infinite. They could live their life. People that have less than 10 years of expectancy at the diagnosis. They could live their life without any problem. So we just watch and monitor the case and be sure that it's not, it's not rising when it's not really so good. But for those who are younger, who say about their life ahead of them, 55, 60, they will have to do something. So that is when surgery comes in. You know, we do radical surgery to remove the plant. By this, we are limiting the disease and nothing will be left there anymore. For those who are not fit for surgery or who don't want surgery because they are afraid that a surgery will be to certain problems like uh, impotence, you know, uh, and so they can have a radiotherapy. Radiotherapy is a use of kindness in relation to one of a cancer cells. Other 
this paper without saying I'll use the compilation. Now, I said earlier on that uh, testosterone is an hormone produced by the testes. It stimulates the prostate gland to. So, we can actually cut off this hormone from further stimulating the prostate gland. So, we can have a just other treatment that are different compilations that we can use. That I won't call you with it. So, we use them in compilation of the treatment which I spoke about prostate surgery and therapy. In advanced places now, the other things that are for them. Like use of a cryotherapy, both with nuclear methods, or laser, and then high intensive focus ultrasound. We can also be used to put a little advanced prostate cancer. Next slide. Now, look at the advanced prostate cancer. That means that the cancer has spread beyond the scalp So, we won't attack the soldiers. Therapy, we want to do something to bring the disease home, to downstage it. Use of hormone can help us to do that. Some people may be so sick that they can't withstand aggressive treatment like surgery and therapy. It may be that only hormone treatment is what is good treatment for them. Hormonal treatment are those are dangerous. That's important to me because the testes is the seat of the system. So we can take the and that will deprive the cancer from going. Next time. Management of um, metastasis, if it has spread well again, it is the position is very difficult. Mortality is 70% in five years. So we now do a call violation, make the patient comfortable. That's the thing that we do for them, including a big, big killer. For those that have medicine in the bones, you can just give them a look at the therapy. Next slide. Then, possible complications that you might have, they are assisted, and we treat them as they come. There is a function we can relieve. For retention, we can do some manipulation to evacuate the blood. If they have a renal failure, we pass them through hemodialysis. You know, you have just means that uh, limited removal of the prostate gland, so that person can be able to pass through it. Next slide. Now, what is important to us that we do know is that we can try as much as possible to prevent prostate cancer. And that is where screen strategy comes in. Okay, every man above 50 must go for annual digital examination and the PSC assessment is very, very important. Most general hospitals can have this done for you. Then we should avoid the risk factors. Stop smoking. Let our diet be a traditional African diet. Avoid fat diet. We should give ourselves vitamin D supplement. There are some factors that we cannot do anything about. Black people, people who are above 70, and those who have family dispositions. Okay? And then you should just do chemo prevention. By use of this drug, I noted the nasty life. Especially to put our family in this position. Next time. I will conclude by just saying these three sentences. The public American professionals should be made aware of the devastating effects of process cancer. This should be detected early in by routine internet examination. TSA screening. Put your prospect for post cancer include early diagnosis, better staging, and chemo prevention. We have to know about it because diabetes is a very common disease. And it is equally a devastating disease, but not in the mode of uh, cancer of the prostate. It's a good
chronic health condition, in which case the body cannot use glucose. The food that we eat eventually will break it down to the simplest element. The SS1, SS2, SS3 can tell us that the carbohydrate is finally broken down into glucose in the body before it can be used and assimilated. But the people that are betting, they cannot use this glucose. Their blood is filled with glucose, yet they are starving because the glucose is not being utilized. It is a metabolic disease which results in high blood sugar level. Metabolic in the sense that our body is like a battery. We keep on working, things keep on happening, things keep on getting digested. But the diabetes, they do not really uh, push the sugar into the cell for it to be used to produce energy. So it's a complex chronic illness that requires continuous medical care. Yeah. And it has more, it, 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 it requires more disciplinary approach in its management beyond just near glycemic control. Because they have issues with uh, vision, issues with uh, ulcer in the legs, renal failure, you know. Different disciplines have to come into managing the project. It is a more systemic disease. All parts of the body are affected. And commonly, I said that the body does not use the glucose. This is why this happens is that there is an overall, which is not enough. Or sometimes the body. So the third one is uh, okay. So type one, type one genetic factor, hereditary factor, other factor like viral infection, etc. So okay. Next slide. We tend to lose weight. Okay. Frequent urination plus erectile dysfunction, blood pressure, diagnosis. It's very simple. From the history, just go for the blood machine at home. Monitor the blood sugar, it's called the code to get to the point. So, if your value is less than seven, you are a lot of work will be because of this, and just go on. And the treatment is to proceed to the hospital. So, they will monitor the blood sugar regularly. And the if man um, exercises, physical activity, sugar, either in the laboratory or in the laboratory at home. Uh, first and foremost, I want to appreciate the paper presenter for a job well done. Uh, we, it's a tropical issue actually, and I think uh, everybody here has stand to benefit one way or the other. Uh, my question is this. I have always had of a situation where they say this this is, is more common with black people than the white. I don't know whether there is any scientific reason. Is it because we live in a tropical area? Or is it the type of food we eat? Or what may be? Because I'm made to understand that it's the same blood that runs within the vein of the black man that also run within the vein of the white man. So why is it a disease that is more common with uh, black people? Then my second question is, is this disease curable? And if the answer is yes, well, I, I always know the position of our medical practitioner. There are some local, I mean, traditional medical practitioners that claim to have uh, an answer to this disease. Uh, what is your position on this? Thank you very much. Uh, as I'm taking the lady, please, the men should know that she's just talking on her behalf. She does not have prostate. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. And I um, want to appreciate our um, lecturer this afternoon for a well done job. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. I just want to ask two questions. The first one is what is the relationship between sex and prostate, cancer, or enlargement? 
And um, the second one, you mentioned also in the leg or something like that. I never and heard of it. Okay, yes. One for the first lecture and the second one for the second lecture. So we like to know the relationship between sex and prostate, whatever, whether cancer, or enlargement. My first question uh, looks a replica to what uh, Georgia has asked. That uh, I used to read that irregular sex by men is prone to having prostate. If a man does not have regular sex, that he can lead to prostate. This is a replica to what uh, they have said. Then the second one is this, about cancer. Uh, I was a victim somehow, through my son. And I went, I followed him to Osu that time, to see the consultant. I used a language which the man did not like. I said, uh, doctor, can you give my son a preventive treatment? Then the man delayed me for long. After attending to all patients, he now said, come, that I know your pain is because you are father. He gave me the file to read, I read it. Now he now said, what, what is cancer? He told me that cancer is what they don't know the cause, and at the same time, they don't know the cure. I want to ask that, is there any cure for that disease called cancer? Because this thing has taken the auditor around 2008, although I lost the, 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 the board. But I want to ask, any cancer, since the doctor said the only the cause, and at the same time, the cure is not known. Now what they are just doing is, let us try this, let us use this, let us use this. I want to ask by confirmation that now, do we now know the cause and cure for cancer? Dr. Wellington, I really appreciate what you have said today. But my question is along what my brother has asked. When you say prostrate, and when you are mentioning prostrate cancer, I did the same thing. Because when you are talking of prostrate, I believe it is just it is it. But cancer, that means something has got into and it's spreading. I believe that uh, we should be careful when we are saying we have prostrate. Because I believe prostrate can be cured. You can use a bow, you can use anything to cure it. But when you are talking of prostate cancer, I believe you should let us know. I don't know whether prostate cancer, like you have said, to me, I will say there is a cure to it. In medical line, you might say, I mean, the doctors will say, yes, you have to use medical. But we have some things, some herbs, some that you can use that will kill this prostate cancer that we are talking about. And I don't know why you are saying that prostate cancer starts from 55. I have some younger people, 40, having prostate cancer. Maybe it's hereditary, like you said. But I believe that when we are looking at things like this, locally, you should, because I saw some local way of, uh, 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 I mean, curing it. But you are not letting us, you are just using that angle of the medical scientific way. You are not looking at, on that table, I had a lot of onion, this, that, put them together, and it works. For me, I am an Agbo person, and I use that Agbo every morning. 
So whatever, what is mean by quantity? There's nothing about quantity. Use gas. You know that small gas. Just put it there, you drink it. You might be saying it's not right, whether it's right or wrong. But what I just want you to clarify is what he has asked. Prostrate. The enlightenment. The enlightenment. And prostrate cancer. That has another connection to it. Thank you, sir. Um, that just shows that uh, we followed the lecture and um, we are eager to have more. Cancer just means swelling of a part. Swelling enlargement of a part. Now, the enlargement could be benign or malignant. Benign means there is a lot of difference between the two. Benign means that it cannot completely damage the, the cannot completely limit the life of that person if it is benign. If it is malignant, then they can limit the life of that person. So that prostate gland, which I spoke about, I said is about 30 grams in front of the bladder. You need to pass through it to exit the body. Semen also flow through it to exit the body. Now if it becomes enlarged, either by benign means or by benign means, it will cause obstruction. It will hold your urine to and begin to assess you. We do assess you, we do your PSA. We say that it is we say that it is lower than four, then we convince you that you can get it be treated, you can be cured of the disease. But if the PSA is above 10, above 20, some people there was a man that came. The man is a contractor. He said all his life, he's not happy to just to but he's having this local pain, which have been something that he was in Lagos, he did not get treated, he then came to the body. Somebody just asked for PSA, and what I knew it was 100. So that was how the man just had it. So if the PSA is there, you then do the examination, you find something, it is hard, you now proceed to take biopsy. Biopsy means that you take a little bit of that tissue, look at it under the microscope, you see the behavioral pattern of the way the cells are aligned. Then you pick your diagnosis. So you can then name that person that is cancer of the prostate patient. So there's difference between ordinary enlargement, which we call benign prostatic apoplasia, we call it BPH, benign prostatic apoplasia, then cancer of the prostate. We can diagnose the two to 100% certainty. Then we can proceed to treat. Okay? BPH is easily treatable with surgery or either of this matter I spoke about. Cancer is extremely difficult. Even if you call the patient because you treat the patient for cancer, less of the person, they have been well for like 20 years. You can say you cure that patient. The patient has to, after so many years, it can still come back. But here we live a healthy life for like 20 years. At that point, you can say you cure the patient. But it's subject to certain factors. You have to catch the disease very, very early. And that's what I was saying. That we should be able to stay the disease. We should be able to know the grade. Or then we can cure. I spoke about radical protectomy. That is, we remove the whole of the prostate gland. The central disease is, is uh, oh, few neurologists can do this procedure in this country. But you must carefully select your patients. But my experience is that most of the people that we treat with their positive cancer, they don't go early. Because the disease itself takes a long time to 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 terminate or to manifest. The blood's prone to certain diseases. It's not only BPH now that blacks are prone to. If so, for some of us who are medically inclined, something like keloid. Maybe you know keloid. Ki it's keloid. You don't see it in white men. Also, cirrhosis of the liver. People that take up back war, cirrhosis of the liver ends up becoming cancer of the liver. You don't see it. You see the blood. Okay, so we are prone to forming some excessive tissue when we have um, diseases. Uh, maybe that's the way they explain why we have BPH, 
more relaxed. There are just other two controls I, I spoke about. Is cancer deposit curable? Yes, we can. If it is called early. I spoke about people going for screening. You know, when we do early medical, there is space in there. If it's a little bit elevated, you go, they do other tests to assess the grade and then the stage. If it's locally confined to the gland, then you can offer a prostitute and then you will be cured of the disease. Now, um, the other, uh, our mother asks about relation between sex and the prostate enlargement. Um, you, I, I mean, you just say that a male is a sex, but that's not what you're talking about. You are talking about coitus, sexual exposure, and all that. I think I spoke about it very briefly. Actually, I don't believe it. That sex will pull you to cancer of the prostate. You just mention it to dismiss it. All right. It's not. It's not be established that if you have too much of a sex, you can have cancer of the prostate. Now, the, 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 the other gentleman over there says something about a lack of sex. Well, you know, I said people who are castrated at puberty, you know, they have impotence and all that. They don't have, you know, cancer of the prostate. Now, do we know the cause of cancer and can we treat cancer? The very first statement I said when I was discussing the cause was that most cancer we don't know the cause. Most cancer. We can say there are some predisposing factors. But lately, there are some people who have some error. When their body blocks is being set, even at conception, they call it hereditary disease. And they've identified that, science have identified that. We see it in breast cancer. There are breast cancer gene. And we are now seeing it in about 10 people of May now. Cancer gene producing, you know, prostate cancer. Okay, so for those ones, you can say, okay, you, you know. But that statement, it, 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 it can be safe to say, we don't know. Treatment, if you catch them early, you can cure. But if they come late, you can only palliate to alter the, to make the patient comfortable. Now, role of apps for the cure of cancer of the prostate. Um, well, I would say it is a really topical. There are a lot of uh, Chinese medication that speak about it, you know. Um, and it's not for me to say that uh, you can use it. I know that by training and my experience, that I laid down procedures you know, by which we approach some of the diseases when they present to us, you know, in the, in the hospital. Thank you very much. Different groups of the Molusi College students entertain the gathering with energetic and interesting choreography and culture.
Towards Chief Barrister S.A. Odumosu, represented by Barrister Tosin Ido, who gave the second lecture on appraising the meat and merits of writing wheels in Nigeria. Barrister Tosi Ido, who also is a legal practitioner, a social commentator, and a prolific lawyer of repute. He is the convener of joint action for democracy and social justice. I have the honor of inviting Barrister Tosi Idowu to address us. And honestly, I ask that we give him the needed attention. We have allowed food to go on while these children were demonstrating. And by now, we should concentrate on our lecture. Thank you very much. You are welcome, sir. This evening, we have a very important uh, topic. And the paper is titled, Appraising the Myths and Merits of Writing Wheels in Nigeria. And it is marking the 50th anniversary of 
Molusi College Old Student Association. Before I go into this uh, topic, we are all very familiar with uh, the word we. We are all familiar with when people talk about we. But there are different kind of wheels. But before I go into this uh, top, this uh, topic, this discussion, and because of the presence of students in our midst, I want to draw our attention to the various constituents of the topic before us, appraising the myths and merit of writing with in Nigeria. To appraise means to evaluate, to assess, to size up something. And meat would also be described as misconception, misrepresentation, a wrong idea of something, the merit something that is worthy, something that is deserving, excellent cause. And uh, the last but not the least is we, which is the crush of our discussion this afternoon. Uh, from the English palace, when they say we, that man has we, it could mean that he has courage. It would mean that he has the strength, char character of strength, or strength of character, so to say. So, that is in the English palace. But in the legal palace, whenever you say we, you are referring to a document. And that document is made by somebody called a testator who expresses intention of how he or she wishes his properties to be distributed after his demise. That is testamentary, a document which expresses the intention of a maker that this is how I want my property to be shared among the various beneficiaries. That is the point of what we are discussing this afternoon. Uh, the Supreme Court, in the case of uh, Asika versus Atuanya, they described we as having two embodiments. They say it is metaphysical, and they say it is also physical. It is metaphysical in the sense that the person who actually made the will is a ghost at the point in which the will is coming to reality. So it is the ghost that is now speaking, and that is why they say it is metaphysical. And that ghost, who is no longer alive at that time, is now expressing certain wishes of how what he has left behind should be shared. The physical aspect by the Supreme Court is that the document itself, it is the, work, it is the only thing that is available where the testator expresses his intention. That is why the Supreme Court said that it is metaphysical and it is physical. The person that you cannot see who has gone, but the document that he has made is now speaking. That is the metaphysical aspect. But the physical document that we can hold on to is the description that the document is physical. Going by the foregoing, we have a clearer understanding of the topic before us. If we ask ourselves, how do people conceive the idea of writing a will in Nigeria? It is not uncommon 
to see people get upset or angry whenever the idea or the subject of wills are mentioned due to the mythical conception or perception they have about it. They consider such individuals as their haters or enemies who have negative thoughts towards them. So whenever people bring up the idea of writing a will, what comes to the mind of an average person? Is it like, you are, am I planning to die? But that is not the case. The fact that you are planning to write a will is not an indication that you are about to die. And whether you write will or you don't write will, death is inevitable. It is the pain that each and every individual must take. So rather, writing a will does not only help one to prepare for one's death, but to also ensure that one's loved ones and beneficiaries are adequately protected after one's demise. So, this document we are talking about, which is the will, if you have it, you have the opportunity of ensuring that your loved ones, the beneficiaries, those who you want to be part of your estate, actually get it. Because if you fail to write a will, two things are involved. It is either why you are alive, you decide to call your beneficiaries together and say, you have this, you have this, you have that. That is called deed intervivals. But that has a lot of challenges. It has a lot of problems that can arise and that can heighten your BP while you are alive. So, as, as lawyers, we always advise people against going deep in survivors. Then if you also fail to write a will, by the time you die, the properties you leave behind, those who are entitled or those who are not entitled, and projects will come. And one way or the other, they will have to share the property. Apologies. But before I, before I go to this, the idea of we is not novel to our system in Africa or in Nigeria, so to say. It's not new to customary practice. But the former we that we are talking about, that this uh, discussion centers on, there has been some sort of customary wills. For instance, during the days of our fathers, they would say, my son, my daughter, please come. They would start sending messages to their children to come, probably on their sick bed. And they would start making declarations. Those kind of declarations, they are called wills. Even if they do not conform to the former criteria that a former will should have. But nevertheless, they are still called will on their own. So, but the one we are discussing today is the former will. How do you make a former will? By the provision of the Wills Act 1837, the idea of writing will was introduced to our legal system by the Statute of General Application. So it's an English practice. No way, we were colonized by the British and they brought some conventions, they brought some practice to us. And this idea of writing a will is also part of what we inherited from the British. And it was by the Wills Act of 1837 that writing will was formally introduced to our legal system. And states of the federations, they have adopted and domesticated these wills with their own innovations, with their own uh, ideas, in order to conform to what is obtainable in their own uh, uh, area. So, 
Considering this format, we want to look at the various terminologies. Testator of testatus. The person who makes a will, when the person is a man, it is called a testator. When the person is a woman, it's called testatrice. Estate is the sum of all that the testator has. The houses, the cars, the land, the money in bank, all those things, they are referred to as the estate of the testator. When you say testate, when the person died testate, it means that the person has the opportunity of writing a will. So when you say somebody died testate, what you are saying is that the person has a will. It's a common language when lawyers say, does the person die testate or the person died in testate? So when you say the person died testing, you are saying that the person actually had a will. But when you say the person does not have a will, you are saying the person died in testing. So it is word and opposite. Then beneficiaries, they are the people who the testator are giving one property or the other in the will. Personal representatives. Personal representatives, this can be described in two ways. When when the person dies and he has a will, the law, I'm talking of former will now, the law allows that individual, that testator, to appoint individuals who would be his representatives. And he will write the names of those individuals. Those individuals to the testators, they are people of proven integrity. People that the testator himself can vouch for. Not Charlatans, not people that just probably met. These are people that the testator would vouch for that if after my demise, this person can actually stand by my words. And these are the people the testator will write as his or her executors. So when you have a will, those representatives, they are called executors. But when you die and you do not have a will, you also will have a representative. Though in that case, it is the court that will now give you representatives. You are good. Because you do not have the opportunity of making a will, you do not have the ability to choose those who will represent you. Perhaps at that time, the family will now convey a meeting. They will now decide to say, okay, you, you, you come together. Then they will now apply to the probate registry, to the high court. So it is the high court that will now give them letter of administration. Those people who are given letter of administration, they are also representatives. But in the case where there is no will. So personal representatives can either be executor or administrator. Administrator when there is no will, executor when there is a will. Then I talk of codice. Codice is a document that is used to amend already existing will. For instance, you have a will you made about five years ago. And this year, you don't want to destroy that old seal, old will rather. So you can have a small document whereby you will put the properties and the beneficiary of the new properties you have acquired. That is called a codice. It could also be a document to report what you have written before. Then, I talk about propounder. Propounder. The propounder of a will is the person who defends that this will is actually in conformity with the provision of the law. This law complies with the law. The person that defends that this will is the actually exist. That is the propaganda of the will. Then the impugner. The impugner is the person who challenges a will. The person who says this will is not valid. When our father, when our mother was making the will, she was not in her right frame of mind. So she could not have made the will. That is the kind of person that is challenging the will, and they are called impugner. 
Then I come to legacy. Legacy refers to movable assets. I give you my car, I give you my fan, I give you my clothes. These are legacies because they are actually movables. You can move them from one place to another. Then when you talk of device, these are immovable property of the testator. They cannot be moved, such as houses, uh, landed properties. These are items that cannot be moved and they are called devices. So when you see these uh, terminologies in wheels, you will know that they are referring to those things as explained. They tell that for the purpose of this our discussion, what we are looking at is a formal will. The law, the will that the law recognizes, not counterfeit, the one that the law of the land recognizes. There are certain criteria or features that shows will must possess. First is that it must be testamentary. It, is, it must be testamentary in the sense that it is going to speak after the demise. It is going to speak from the death of the person. It is not when the person is alive. So it's a document that is speaking from the dead. Then it is ambulatory. That means you can change it. For instance, you have will you have written about five, ten years ago, and now you have acquired more properties. You want to change it. The law allows you to change it. As long as it complies with the provision of the law. Then, will must be voluntary. It must be voluntary. Very, very important. In fact, one of the greatest and most fundamental factor in writing will is that it must be voluntarily made. Anything short of voluntariness will be declared void. So, a will, you must make it independently of your own mind. Not that you are being coerced. Not that you are being forced. It must come from your mind. Then, it must be executed and signed and witnessed according to law. I'm going to come to this, but let me quickly explain. For a will to be valid, that will, if it is written by the person himself, which is not advisable anyway, if it is written by the person himself, and he has allotted certain properties to certain individuals, the law expects that while the person who makes the will is signing the document, two witnesses at least must be in his presence. That is, he must sign the document, which is called this will, he must sign it in the presence of at least two witnesses. So if it is just one witness that was there when the person who is making the will is signing, that will has not fulfilled the requirement of the law. But the law says that you can have more than one, you can have more than two, but at least there must be two witnesses. So when you are signing, two witnesses must be there. So that's what I mean by it must be executed. Then it must be definite and certain. What that means is that you must be able to show that I'm giving my house in Banana Island to the Buera. Who is this? Who is this? It must be certain. I'm giving my car, my type of car, you mentioned the car, to so 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 person. It has to be definite. It must be certain. So by the description and the person that is benefiting. What makes a will valid or condition for its validity? I've said part of that before. For a will to be valid, for you to say that this one is a will that can stand the scrutiny of legal battle, that will must be in writing. It must be one that is written. If you are, you call your children together and you start saying something, then you, you, it has not fulfilled the requirements of the law. So, we must be in writing. It must be voluntarily made. I've said that. 
it must be executed, I've said that, and the testator must be of a sound mind. There are two reasons, or two grants, upon which a will can be challenged. One of those grants is the fact that, as at the time the testator was making the will, the person was not of a sound mind. We have children like that, however big, they are. That is why it is advisable when we are making a will or we want to make a will, we should consult those who know. Some of them say, as at the time the will was being made, the person was not of a sound mind. He could not have understood what he was doing at that time. So it was it's a grant for you to challenge the will. Another grant to challenge the will is that the will was orchestrated by undue influence by one of the beneficiaries. For instance, it could be your wife, it could be one of your children, the person started monthly prayer on you, that you have your house, you know you are getting older, and you want to take care of you now. So those are the issues that can amount to undue pressure. So, when will is being challenged on that ground, that will have to be set aside. Then, I want to come to other types of will, like I mentioned, so that we can have a grasp that it is not just the former will. We also have instances where some other people will write will, if it is obtainable in the, in the climate in which it is being uh, written. Non cooperative or customary will. I said that the one that was practiced in the days of our fathers, that they would just call the children and start making declarations. Maybe they would have seen angels at that time that is beckoning to them that, oh, yeah, come home, my son, come home, my daughter. So they start making declarations and most valuable uh, achievement. If at the end of your life you could say, ah, thank God, okay, I know that this and this is going to be done. So that is what one of the advantages. Then, how to test mental capacity of a testator? How do you test the mental capacity? The testator must understand the nature of the act of making a will. What that means is that the person who is making a will must know the meaning of what he is doing at that material time. For instance, a testator who has about 10 houses and who has about 20 children and maybe approaching a solicitor, the, the person who wants to make a will, the testator, so-called, could not remember the number of houses he has, could not remember the number of children he has. So, by that test, you will know that this person is not mentally fit. Or perhaps the person has just got drunk and is coming to a lawyer, please. I want to write a will. Take my instruction. My house, my house. It is not in that state that you approach a lawyer that you want to write a will. So the person must be of a sane mind, must be of sound mind while writing a will. It must not be after the person has been drunk, it must not be after perhaps he just fought one of his wives or one of his children just provoked him and he said, Ha, ah, you this child, this is the time to visit my lawyer. I wanted to go there all along, but this thing that you have done today, that is not the best time to visit your lawyer or you want to write a will. Then, the testator must understand the extent of the property. I have said that. You must be able to know your estate. Okay, I have 20 cars. This is the registration number of uh, my Vensa. This is the registration number of my Honda. This is uh, my house, three bedroom flat. You must be able to bring all these things together to show that you are of a sound mind. Then, you must understand, appreciate, and recollect the persons who are the object of his bounty. The person who are entitled, you must be able to name them one by one. It could even be that the person that the testator wants to be part of the estate might not be uh, his biological uh, niece, 
or a nephew that the testator has been responsible for. He will put it in his will. And uh, that will show that the testator actually appreciates and understands the extent of what he is doing at that material time. He must understand the manner in which he desires the property to be shared among the beneficiary. Okay, I have 10 rooms. I have 10 children. Okay, let each of them have the 10 rooms in equal share. By logic, you know that that person understands what his intention. That means he's giving them each, each room, each room to one person. But the testator will come and say, Oh, I have 10 children and I have 10 rooms. It is this my child that has been put to me. I give it to that person alone. There is nothing wrong if you do that at times. But it could also mean that is this person, does, are you saying that the nine, other nine uh, children are not good to the person? So it would also mean like, let's test the soundness of the uh, person. Then we come to undue influence. Undue influence. What we are saying about undue influence is that while the person is making the will, it must be voluntary. The person must not be coerced. He must have a free will. It must not be that somebody is dictating and that is, and you know you have one house in Banana Island. There is another one in the Jebo Day. That one in Banana Island. So that we amount to undue influence. The commissioning and gathering in the school premises concluded amidst joyous feasting and resonating music, helping to reaffirm the bonds of friendship. The sets then geared up for the gala night which took place at all in home base hotel in Ijari Ijebo Day. The 69 17 set that they are now uh, commissioning the renovation of the staff room and uh, this is a wonderful project because the situation before now was not that good but uh, they decided that they want to create a uh, conducive environment for the teachers to perform their duty well and that's the reason they decided to renovate this place and uh, I wish to thank them for a job well done and I pray that God will continue to bless them all. This is not the first time that uh, the 6973 CSS are doing this. We had uh, a master bus that have been granted since uh, uh, 2014 and I approached them. They released one for the pursuit of the engine and today the vehicle is now on the road. And this one is another one. They did that one, and this is another one. They have been doing wonderfully well for this school. In fact, they have passion for this school. So when it comes to the issue of Molusi College, it is the, they, they, in fact, they will give consideration to it before any other thing. If you are in my position, how will you feel? I feel elated and be, uh, be, uh, I feel uh, happy because I'm a part of a uh, uh, Mokosa family. I'm a student, and when you see your seniors that are doing wonderful well, what do you do? You'll be happy. I'll be able to talk about it outside that uh, I belong to Molusi College and I'm proud to be a Molusian. I feel great today. This is the nice 73 set are renovating their projects of junior school staff room, which is very good. And I hope that when we grow up, we also will do more something better than them. They shall succeed in life. Their children too will succeed. They will not lack anything in their life and they will still do more in Lucy College. I feel very happy because of the renovation of this staff room because of Tisha. And I and I feel very happy. They will succeed in life and they are going to do more. And then the sets that are at the back are going to do more than this. Um, I feel very happy and I feel very appreciative. I'm thanking them for what they have done for us in our school most especially the old, old students. They have been trying their best to make sure we are the best for them too. And I pray that God will continue helping them, not their endeavors. Well, I hope everybody should 
follow their steps and listen in the class and do other good things they have been doing when they are in school too so that we can do more better than them in Mulusi College. Um, so I pray for them that God should continue blessing them and their children and they will never lack anything in future too. And God should bless us too as the Mulusian students so that we will be greater than them in future. So we are so proud of them uh, we, and we really appreciate them for commissioning and renovate this, uh, the staff room in the junior school. And um, my message for them that they should continue doing the wonderful work they have been doing in Molusi because their work always make Molusi College great and we are proud of them. My prayer for them is that they will not lack all their children, they will not suffer in vain on them, they will not labor in vain. And I also pray that myself we also do more than them because I'm also an old student of Molusi College. Today, uh, we thank God because Molusi is one of the best schools in Nigeria, even in the world. There is nowhere you not find Molusia throughout the world. That is why we have global president in the presence of Dr. Wale Kukoyi. Why Dr. Venerable Odeniyi is the vice president globally. Uh, Molusi College, anytime, any day, uh, the Molutians always come around. Renovation, construction, and any other thing to Molusi College. That is why you look at Molusi College as a newborn baby. When you see the building, the anywhere, you see that Molusi College is one of the best schools in, in the country. We're really happy about it. I'm also a uh, an whole student of this college, 7883. Yes, the clinical is over there, it's from my set. Look at that, uh, what we call it, board tree, it's from my set. We always remember Molusi College because the forefathers have been telling us that whenever you find yourself, be good, try your best. Then you remember your parents, remember your God first, your parents are Molusi College. Anywhere you find yourself, you remember Molusi College. You have to come back and do something to Molusi College. And that is what we are saying now to the new generation, that anywhere you find yourself tomorrow, you come back to Molusi College and do something good. That is the, our motto in Molusi College. We always appreciate them. We pray for them here and in my personal house that all Molutians in life will be able to do good. God will protect them. God will bless them. Every Molutians, by the grace of God, Almighty Allah will be with them. Proud Molutian, only the best. Only the best. And you can see that it's only the best that is being exhibited here. Yeah, as you can see, we have a project commissioning for the teachers in the school. We thought of what to do that will uh, impact people's lives, put smiles in their faces, make them happy, and they keep remembering today for life, even after they might have left the school. And that is why we decided to renovate the old staff room for the junior secondary school to what you saw over there. Yes, we did work. We did more whole water. We did more whole water. It's downstairs. And this time around, it won't be five, five years. It's going to be an annual celebration. A child that is born 50 years ago, you know the implication. So our leaving the school 50 years ago and still alive, being kicking, it's by the grace of God, not because we want it. So many of us have gone. So many of us are at home. They could not come. But for God to spare our lives, so this moment, you can see how we are, I mean, so what else are we saying than to just... Be faithful, be thankful to God that has been so faithful to us. You're welcome. And you join, don't forget to join us. There is still going to be a grand finale, the Ghana night in the evening at the hotel. So we'll see you there.